Well, hello everybody, this is Pal Jasmine Gonzalez. Welcome to my channel. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Today is going to be a very interesting video. So I'm in my room, I'm in my living room. It's Saturday, um, October 16th. Yeah, it's October 16th. Yeah, October 16th. Saturday, October 16th, 2021. Welcome to my channel. Um, it's been a while since I've been having make a video and... Today I have decided that I'm going to make a video about making stuff because I like making things. Um, not many people know that I like making things, but I do like making things. So I'm going to teach you all today. And my roommate is not here, so I can speak loud. Uh, but that's his cat. So it's just me and his cat. Viago, Viago, say hello to the camera, Viago. I don't know what he's doing to that box. Hey, listen, you can't eat that box. Viago, Viago. Viago, I think he's bored pretty much, maybe, I don't know. Now, uh, Viaguito, say hello to the camera, hi. Okay, that's too much of a close-up. <laughs> Adorable. Meow. Yeah, meow. I think maybe it's because it's getting close to his uh, dinner time, so dinner time for him is at 8 o'clock. So, anyway, so I am going to set the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So, uh, let me explain a little bit. So, like, you can make... Today we're going to learn how to make a dice rolling tray. A dice rolling tray. So this one that I made a few months ago is a dice rolling tray. So what it means is like there's a tray to keep your dice from rolling all over the table. If you are a gamer like me, I like playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, I'm a gamer. I started playing when I was in uh, high school, but then I stopped because my high school was a crazy evangelical high school. And apparently playing Dungeons and Dragons was uh, people thought back in the day that it was like uh, playing with Satan or it was satanic and all that kind of stuff. So they stopped playing at, at school and then I got into college and then uh, went to a hobby store, bought my first pair of dice and uh, you can see the dice here. And um, and then I found a group in the Campus Center in Puerto Rico in the University of Puerto Rico, Mayagüez. And I've been playing ever since. And uh, I like playing where I get to roll dice, real dice, real mass rocks that comes in all sizes and shapes and colors and like, I think that's the beauty about what I like about collecting. It's like they come in so many different colors and like patterns and like, yeah, you know, like, look, look at this color. This color is beautiful. I like it. It's a like green color. Um, this color I like too, you know, like it's a blue. You know, like they come in all different colors. So like I like making dice rays and usually what I do is I go to um you can get um they are made out of wood. Um I have made them myself before in the past, but that's not how to make it yourself. That's how to take something that is already made by somebody else and you're going to take and you have a couple of options and I'm going to show you two. This one is a wood canvas. I bought this wood canvas at Walmart. And um, they just said the wood canvas. And all you have to do is like sand it a little bit. So as you sand it a little bit, um, then you can paint it. And you can paint it whatever color you want. That's why I decided to go kind of like a purple color. And, uh, and then what you're also going to need is a felt. And I bought this felt today at John Craft. But you also can get felts like this at Walmart. So you get them, and uh, of course, the first thing that you want to do, that there's another option, and this one is a very cheap option. I found this one. This is from Art Minds, and I found this at it's a wood uh, wood shadow box. So it, you can do uh, crafts in here, and then hanging up, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I found this one at Michaels, and they are only ninety nine cents, and they come in different shapes. They come like this rectangular and also come in this hexagonal. This hexagonal was very interesting to make because to get the pattern for the fall, that was a little bit tricky, but I was able to get it. And yeah, there is a little bit of time mistake, but it works very nice. And I like the way that it looks. You know, it's a very, it's a very nice dice rolling tray. I'm very happy with this one. It looks really neat. You know, the shape is very interesting. So I'm also looking at the shape of a D20 when you draw it in two dimensions. So that's why I like this one. But going back, so I'm going to use this one as an example and I may have already gotten ahead and painted one um, but so 
this one, when you purchase it, it comes with two things, this things and this. So what I do is I remove the things. So the first thing is like I use a little, little screwdriver, and I'm going to remove these things from here. going to damage the so, let me see if I can it shouldn't take that long that's not a very big uh, screw but uh, considering I'm also not using the right screwdriver I should be using a Phillips set not this one uh, but I'm told to go and get a Phillips set so Regardless if you use a Phillips head or you are like me and you are use this one. So you want to make sure that you remove the, the screw the screws. Yeah, I should have brought a Phillips screwdriver. This is take make it taking forever. Oh yeah, and also you want to use a pearl uh, pliers, but it's a very tiny screw, like you can see it there. It's not a very not very big. So yeah. Remove the screws. Let me just take care of the other one. Let me just take the other one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me finish using the plier for this. So that way. I made that bunch of this, but I don't think I'm going to sell them. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe I will have to start giving it to my friends. So now, for this one, it's a bit more tricky because they have like a little um, staple in here. So what you want to do is like use a screwdriver and try to dig a little bit. To take it out. And then eventually you're going to use the pliers to take the to take it out. So I got enough. And now I'm going to take the pliers and I'm going to take the staple out. So it's like a staple that was holding that little rope in there. So you can see in there. So I take that out and set up it there. And same for the other side. And this is going to be a very cheap way of making them. I'm not like an art C art expert that you're going to fill this with like wood putty and all that kind of stuff. You could if you want to, but you don't need to. And I don't feel like doing it because I just want to like do it quickly. So yeah, um, so I'm going to cut corners. But if you want to, if you want to be more crafty and be making look more pretty, go ahead and do that. It's your own, it's your own dry stray, and in your dry stray you can do whatever you want to do. So, oh, let me see. I'm having a little bit of difficulty with this one. I think I'm going to have to do it a little bit uh, different. So, let me see. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, here we go. Now I got the, the other staple. And then, like I said, you are going to use a little bit of sand paper or sand uh, sand sponge and sand it remove the sticker from this you don't need, need that sticker anymore so you can get rid of that and then and then you can paint it um, whatever color you want like in this one that I use, I decided to use this color. So I got a head already and I already painted it. So I don't have to paint it. So because I already painted it. So you can see it's right there. It's already painted. And it's painted with that glow in the dark color, which I don't know if it will glow in the dark, but I hope it will. But yeah, I'm going to let it dry more. It's still not dry enough in my opinion. So yeah, I don't like that blotch of like paint in there. So extend that paint. I may do a second coat 
but I wanted to try it first before I do the second coat. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm going to let it dry more um, in here. So now you could paint it, or you could do the first step would be to make sure the dimensions of the inside area from here to here and from here to here so that way you can cut a piece of felt oh this splotch of paint oh no my fingers got painted oh no yeah there we go my finger go totally completely painted oh well that's my fault that's my fault it's okay all right so let it dry there let me watch my fingers quickly i'll be back Sorry, they, 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 there hasn't been any cut that didn't have the making of this video. Um, so yeah, me dry my hands. Uh, okay. uh, so, yeah. Like I said, you paint the video, the, not the video. Um, you paint the tray, whatever color you want, and then once it's dry, completely dry, <coughs> and do what I did. Um, so you're gonna take the dimensions, and there are two ways that you can take the dimension. One of them is by using uh, one of my favorite tools. This is a square you can find at your local hardware store. Um, this one I got at Home Depot. Um, it's a metal one, so you can use it and make sure the inside dimension. So it's about going to be as close as possible. So I know it's a. Um, what you can do is like you can put it in here. Um, hopefully the dimensions don't vary because these things are not like perfectly made, um, so it could be a mistake. So this is. Three and uh, almost three and three and three three eighths, three and three eighths. So three and three eighths. Yeah, three and three eighths. Three and three eighths. Three and three eighths by. I don't even need to move it because I place a square in there and I can also get the top dimension three three and three eighths by five and uh five and uh and one eighth five and one eighth three and three eighths by five and what almost five and a quarter say so yeah so then I'm going to take those measurements transfer them to the felt and then I'm going to take and cut the square to size and I'm not going to do it because I don't have enough time it's already in 30 minutes that I've been taping this so once you cut that uh, the other option also for measuring you can use a micrometer um, Well, this is not a micrometer, this is a... Mm, damn it, I can barely forget the name of the tools. Damn it! I need to take the class the other day. Uh, it's a caliper. It's a caliper. Caliper! Caliper! It's a caliper! Caliper! So what you do is like... I'm measuring the inside dimension, so I'm going to use for measuring this. I'm going to use the top, the top thing, so... I just extend it. Just go until I can get there. No, to be uh, as straight as possible. So this is going to be uh, two, three, three. Yep, three and a 
three and five eighths, yeah, three and five eighths, three and five eighths, indeed. Yes, yep. So three and five eighths. So it has the markings inside here, and it's difficult for the camera to see, but it has some markings inside here, and wherever the lines that's the right measurement that you will have. Um, so yeah. So this is by 16, I think, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah, so it's 16, so 2, 3, and plus a 3, so 3, and uh, yeah. It's five eighths. That's the one that I like the most. So three and five eighths. So that's good. Um, I think I don't have this one. I'll be able to hook them in the the other dimension because it's too short. So I'm going to just to trust the the score for this. But you could use this to take measurements. So um, this is if you want to be really precise. But you don't need to. You don't need to use a caliper. If you don't have a caliper, a ruler, or even a measuring tape, might be the best, your best bet to measure that. So measuring tape will be fine too. So yeah, because then you can set it up and it will give you measurements too. Um, but yeah, but if you don't have a measuring tape, feel free to use that or, or a ruler if you have one. So um, yeah, so once you paint it, then you're going to cut the felt and then once you're going to attach the felt and what I do to attach the felt I just use regular glue pretty much oh no this happened shit um yeah so I just use regular glue and uh I just that's going to be a bunch of little paint in there I was able to take it out before it dried up so yeah so you put the paint and what I just like, I mean, you put the glue to attach the file, you put the glue and then I use a brush to like spread out so it covers the whole section and then I attach the file to the, to the, to the, um, to the wood and that's all it takes to complete the, guys, tray. very simple way and I apologize, it's just like I'm me operating the camera, I can not set the camera somewhere. If you all want to see this like little by little more in depth step by step instruction, I could do that. But I just want to church and I'm making this things and then like what is once it's dried and a little like twenty four hours like for the fault to to the glue to dry to the fault and then after twenty four hours you can pick your favorite die and start rolling your dice in the dice tray that you just made. And again, you just painted it, you kinda of made it pretty much so it's yours. You can say you made it and take it to your gaming sessions and you will not have dice rolling all over the table. That's I got. Peace everybody. Stay safe.